So folks, I finally started farming worms, or for those that you are in the know, vermiculture slash vermicompost. Now I know some of you guys follow us on Facebook, so you may have seen a few weeks ago that I took ownership of our herd of worms. That's right, a herd. We've got to try and get the right terminology here. My worms of choice for the first herd are African nightcrawler worms, or if you're in Thailand, they're commonly known as AF worms. Three main reasons why I've plumbed for AF worms. One is they grow quite a good size and they're a good, good fishing bait. I know all worms are good fishing bait, but they're a good size. They're fast growing as well. They reproduce, I've got four reasons. Uh, and, and the main reason is number four. Oh, and number four, nearly forgot is AF worms can tolerate higher temperatures. So here, obviously, in Thailand, the tropical climate, they can, they can handle a little bit higher, higher temperatures. So recently, we just hit 40 degrees, and they're absolutely fine, no problem. Right, then, let's have a butcher's. Now, when I say worm farm, oh, before I get into the worm farm, excuse the mess, we had, we had high winds and uh, quite a bit of rain last night. It's the third drop of rain we've had since late September. So it, 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 it come through here at quite, a, at quite a rate of knots and uh, we had a bit of a raging torrent. Okay, so some of you that are into vermiculture, oh, I did say I was gonna tell the, the difference between vermiculture and vermicompost. So vermiculture is the growing of the actual worms and the vermicompost is to do with the castings. So you, you're trying to produce as many castings as possible. They both go hand in hand, really. Um, it's just that there's a few differences. Um, and as the videos go along over a course of a few months, and uh, I generally get the grip of things all wormified, uh, then we can go into a bit more details. So the main reason I've gone into these tanks here, because some people will be like, why haven't you just done a huge worm bin or a worm tower? or a wedge system, things like that. It's so that I can control things a lot, lot easier and a lot, lot quicker. So a lot of people in Thailand, I would say the, the majority of people that are into vermiculture in Thailand do the tank system like this or the bowl system. And they drill a lot of holes underneath and they wet them down every couple of days. They absolutely drench it and the excess water comes out the bottom. Uh, now you can use that as worm tea, of course. Uh, but what, from what I've seen is the, the tires just let it drain through and then clean out underneath. I've gone slightly differently. Uh, well, I started off with seven of these small ones. I have no idea. There's a palm, palm nut skin in there. Oh, the wind last night. Um, and things weren't going that well. So one, I, I took receipt of the AF worms. And I'll be honest with you, within 24 hours, out of one kg, so I don't know how many worms that is, I should really know, uh, I lost about 50 worms. They wouldn't stay underneath the, uh, the food stock, the feed stock, and uh, they could climb out, and it was all going horribly wrong. I was at, I've never been so worried about worms in all my life. So I immediately got onto Google. I have researched this a hell of a lot before I've got into it. I know uh, a few years back I did a, a worm tank underneath my chicken roost, and that seemed to work quite well until I forgot to put the roost back down, the chickens got in, and I never went for it again. So um, the reason that I was losing a lot of worms, or well, I think quite a few reasons, is one, I didn't have enough bedding. This is quite coarse bedding. This is just the coconut fibre off the trees. I know a lot of people use coconut core. So that's layered in there. I put extra in there, um, and some dry leaves as well, some scrunched up cardboard rather than leaving it flat. And I, re I think the reason that they were trying to get out, one, I didn't have enough moisture. I'd gone for the, the old um, squeeze factor. When you squeeze all this, just one drop of moisture pump pops out. Um, I, I pumped up the moisture level, so we're getting two or three drops. Before that, I didn't have a lot of bedding in there. And the feed stock is so fine, and I'll show you the reason why, um, that I think it was, it was almost anaerobic. I think the... the oxygen level down the bottom was uh was not adequate and the, the worms were staying up on top but now they're they're underneath and they're doing fine uh, there's not many worms in each one let's try and find there's one just getting away down there the the fast buggers but they're actually in the bedding there's one i'd class him as a teenager we're only about three times the size of that so yeah they're they're happy as larry now 
and I haven't had any escape whatsoever. No problem with ants, no problem with the frogs or the toads or birds getting in there. Um, now they aren't going to be staying here forever, it's just that I like to uh, give a little bit of water every single day. Probably won't do today because obviously with a lot of rain last night and they got sprayed a little bit. But you can see it's just starting to dry out on the top there. There's still plenty of moisture underneath and in the bedding. Some of you might be thinking, well, certainly if you haven't watched us on the live stream, Lee, I thought you were going to go into your black soldier fly larvae and, in, and uh, kickstart your production there. Was tempted, we lost a lot, well, we lost all of them last year, round about this time when we're getting, we had about a month of 40 degrees nearly, day after day all the time. It, it was absolutely manic and they just couldn't survive. I know um, a guy called Duncan, Sky Farm Organics, and uh, he, he was growing them quite a lot for his chickens and he was losing loads as well. The person that we bought our eggs from, they, they stopped production for a while. And the, the other reason that um, I've decided against the BSF is purely for the feedstock. So we were, we were having to go to the noodle shop lady, which was fine, you know, she was giving us two or three bucketfuls of food every single day for them, but it was like wet, sloppy goop. So I was having to process that, get rid of the extra excess vo um, moisture, uh, and then add it to the to the maggots. We're also getting loads of the little lizards, the gin jocks. They were eating loads. Um, but yeah, it was the at the end of the day, it was the the temperature that sort of like put the kibosh on it. I can well, where I'm going to move the go uh, the the goats. It's another story. Where I'm going to move the worms to once I've once I'm 100% happy with the system. Um, it is cooler generally all year round. Um, but again, I, I really don't want to go down the BSF route because of the, the, the feedstock. Jesus Christ, the wind's getting up again. It's just knocked over my um, chalkboard with all my lists on there. Right then, uh, feedstock. This is the kiddie. As with most things on our poor pang farm, we're trying to make it sort of like a closed system. We want to use everything, not waste anything. And the goat jelly beans is probably the biggest what could we call it byproduct of what we do here so let me show you what i generally do with it you soil boffins will love this so we use it to beef up our our soil so we mix it with a bio, finely crushed biochar which the the goats do for us but i can see it but i'm not sure if the camera will pick it up and then they mix it in with our with our top so i have used compost made quite a lot of compost and we, generally you can never have too much compost can you it's just that we've been growing in quite a few areas now and of course we feed our um all our fruit trees so yeah this is just my new vegetable area that i've started and um yeah, we need a lot of compost, but compost takes a long time and a lot, to, well, a lot of effort. And time is what I'm sure at. So the other reason that we use uh, joke galley, uh, joke galley beans, joke goat jelly beans, is as a mulchalizer. Here we go. So underneath this, these are my. I had veggies grown in here before so we've got a normal compost in here and then we use the the goat jelly beans as like a mulch so this won't dry out if this dries out it will go all cracked and um it, you know the water can't penetrate it very well here it's just all jelly beans so that's got about eight inches of jelly beans in here mixed in with biochar to, so it doesn't it doesn't smell of goat poo uh, and you can see how many wheelbarrows i'll be putting now i used to riddle this so i used to get uh, the jelly beans that had been crushed and composted down or just crushed and under hoof by the herd um and i used to do top dressings on the my raised beds around the front which are probably my, my main beds um but when it comes to the goats i want to i want to use 100 percent um goat jelly beans the problem being don't try this at home kids um these are quite hard until they start to break down they, after a little while when they go dry you get like a hard outer shell once you once you break into there it's all st soft good stuff if you're a worm now i can't go trampling goat jelly beans 
all the time and i don't want to use the stuff that the goats have already trampled underneath the uh their feed table um because that's just a daily th it, it just gets fresh stuff on there every single day so it's for cleaning out underneath the goat house so i needed a way to break down the jelly beans nice and quick now i know you can pre-compost for worms so basically you do some hot composting like i've done in previous videos years ago where i layered hyacinth goat jelly beans biochar wood chips grass cuttings weeds all that sort of thing and it was pretty quick but it was flipping hard to set up each pile and we are looking to do a lot of worms in the future so pre-composting it's not something that's i wouldn't say it's not viable but to me it's doing the job twice i want to do it once so here we go underneath here check this out it is so we did have a bit of rain last night the jelly bean macerator now you can do this super super fine and have like a little filter a screen in here and but we don't need to do it now i did this two weeks ago so it's dried but you can get an idea how fine this is it just comes out like a super fine powder when he used the sieve on it or the screen i had a flipping asthma attack it was so fine we had plumes of but it looked like smoke but plumes of super fine goat goat poo powder in the air so it was uh it was no good so it's a pretty simple setup but this it spins brown so quick that once you put your goat jelly beans in through the hopper and it comes through the chute there into here and you can see these have got teeth as well by the time it makes its way down there it's all powdered now even if it's fresh jelly beans they're still a little bit too dry for the worms to eat so i stick them in a oh, i've got one here just stick them in a bucket this isn't at the actual just jelly beans this is my raised bed mix look at that absolutely brilliant so it's got all sorts of bits of goodness in there but it's got compost in as well loads of our super fine biochar good stuff so I stick the jelly bean powder in one of those i don't fill the water right to the top so i mean all the videos that i've watched or 99 percent the videos that i've watched of the the thai vermiculture vermicompost guys they use cow dung and that comes in big dry clods it's always sold dry so they've got to rehydrate it so they'll they'll submerge the uh the goat manure uh, the, the cow manure for a few days uh, and then you'll see them mashing it up by hand i saw one bloke doing it in his bare feet as well like treading grapes that's not for me um so i'll just keep on adding the water over a period of like 24 36 hours then when i think it's ready lift it up give it a squeeze if there's more than three drops of water come out you know it's a little bit too wet um if it, if you're not getting a couple of drops i'll just add a little bit more water leave it another few hours and then add it to my tank so it's pretty straightforward um now i've got the balance right so um what i'm looking for now fingers crossed are cocoons see i'm getting the anger this worm farming lingo yeah cocoons so basically they're worm eggs uh, and each cocoon should give you sort of like between one and three eggs now apparently they're very 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 small but uh humans with normal eyesight can normally spot them uh i've got no chance so it's another reason why i'm keeping this slightly wetter than um the one drop system because when you when you want them the worms to breed once they're sexually mature um they're like a little bit more moisture in their uh, in the, the medium that they're they're living in so hopefully we'll start to see a few cocoons in the near future long-term plans are to make real headway and the most use out of our goat manure i mean we've got so much and now it's um oh i nearly put goat poo powder in my air which isn't the wouldn't be the first time i got it behind my ear yesterday Tim was like what the heck you got behind your ear yeah so the goat jelly beans so we use them for mulch um you know you put sort of like 10 15 wheelbarrows around a, a palm tree every single year 
Um, same that we were doing with the coconuts as well. Uh, we do a top mulchalizer round things like our lime trees and our papaya trees, bananas as well. Um, but to get the most out of it, I mean, you're increasing its um, use uh, when you turn it to, to vermicompost, you know, and it'll improve um, not just the nutrients, certainly when, and, but the, the, the biological activity, the bacteria, the fungi, that sort of thing, you know, because we use it with the biochar. So we, we've made the biochar super, super fine, or the goats have, and then I've sifted it, and I've also added crushed eggshells. So the biochar... Um, helps with the uh what could we say the microbial explosion inside the the vermicastings uh the eggshells are really for the worm's gut so we've made that really powdery as well uh, a lot of people dis eggshells but i think usually it's because they go like that with the eggshell and there's massive pieces left i don't know any worm that can eat those so i've made them super super fine so fine that when you're doing it if you breathe in it actually burns your burns your lungs because obviously eggshells are quite sharp so a, a worm apparently it's good it's, it's like the the crop in a chicken it needs a certain amount of grit i do put a handful of normal soil in each tank as well just to help things along so they've got basically three things there to help them digest the the food because they can eat the biochar as well or they'll put it in the gut and it'll act like teeth for them so i think that's it for now it is i mean it's all exciting long-term plan is to is scale it up. I mean, this thing is is massively scalable. What, what have we got now? We've got mid, mid four, I think we've got 45, 46 goats now. And, um, you know, they generate a lot of, lot of jelly beans. And this is just a great way. It's probably the best way that I can come up with for us to actually use it. Yeah, I know hot composting is, is brilliant. I have done that and I was, I was so happy with it. But um, time-wise, not great so hopefully i've got plenty of fishing bait uh some some extra feed for the chickens which we've got planned for as soon as i finish the chicken coop a little bit behind schedule as always don't take the pee uh almost as far behind on schedule as, as the video so I, I know it's been a long long time guys um but as i'm getting older i seem to have less and less time i think i was just blagging it before i think i was just spending all my time doing video and not enough time doing farming a lot of people said where do you get time to do your videos well, it was obviously my farming time now i'm just i'm proper flat out so is too tunes off site as usual uh she's doing the second trip for the goat fodder so we're doing two trips a day for that still um we're cutting napier grass for them and yeah finally at the end of um kidding season for the next few months we've got more than one kidding season here so yeah, we're just uh, chasing our backsides and uh, occasionally we, uh, we catch up. Um, hopefully we'll get caught up before our next lot of farm stay guests come. Uh, big news coming up as well about an upcoming raft race, fishing match, uh, survival, 36 hour, 48 hour uh, challenge between me and Toon. So lots of competitions, lots of bad language and uh, obviously a lot of shouting from Toon. Hope you are all hitting well and uh, if not, uh, get on your uh, Himalayan salt or your Celtic sea salt and your fresh lime and uh, top it up with water and uh, you'll feel a million dollars like I do every now and again, sometimes. Take care. Ta-da for now.